In the years following the year 1792, the sport of Formula One was revolutionized, as was the entire world. Now that's an interesting thing because Formula One hadn't been invented in 1792 and nor had the motor car. But an English engineer by the name of Sir George Cayley started work on what he called the lift generating inclined plane, or as we know it now, the wing. Now, he did this work and it carried on for some time and it led to him building the first human equipped glider and he took to the skies in that kite, if you like. However, it wasn't really the first aircraft as we know it and it wasn't really the invention of a wing because, well, birds and dinosaurs and insects had kind of got wings long before Sir George Cayley really thought of it. But his invention did change the world and in fact, it revolutionized the way we live our lives and the sport we all love. It wasn't until the 20th century and 1903 until the work done by Sir George Cayley really started to bear fruit and the experimentation of two brothers from Ohio. Orville and Wilbur Wright were perhaps not the first people to achieve powered flight. There were a few others before them. However, they were the first to fully understand what it meant and the work involved. The industry spawned by the Wright brothers revolutionized wing design. The knowledge gained by the aviation industry was not really used in motor racing until 1956, when a young Swiss educated engineer by the name of Michael May bolted what Sir George Cayley probably would have said was an upside down lift generating incline plane to the top of his Porsche 550 Spider. He entered it into a race at the Nürburgring and went significantly faster than the Works 550s and this invoked the ire of the Porsche team. They complained to the race organisers and had Michael May's wing banned. Michael May's developments at the Nürburgring were largely unnoticed and forgotten by the motor racing industry. May himself went on to become a Formula One driver, but without great success, and after a big crash in 1961, he decided to concentrate on engineering, where he did have big success, but it wasn't really credited to him as much as it should have been. However, motor racing hadn't fully forgotten what Michael May did at the Nürburgring. In the mid-1960s, following work done by General Motors and Paul Van Valkenburg, another American engineer, Jim Hall, fitted a wing to his Chaparral sports car. It was greatly successful, and after that, the wing-shaped genie was truly out of the motor racing bottle. Wings first arrived in Formula One during the 1968 Monaco Grand Prix weekend, when the Lotus team fitted wings to the front and rear of Graham Hill's Lotus 49. It was hugely successful, pole position, race win, and everybody in the pit lane noticed. Ferrari went away, they came up with their own version, and the aerodynamic era of Formula One had truly begun. The battle of the wings was well underway, and things really quickly got very extreme. Wings mounted on high stilts in clean airflow, high above the cars, mounted directly to the uprights of the cars. They were creating huge downforce and were highly effective but they also came with a huge risk. That risk came to light at the 1969 Spanish Grand Prix at Monuic Park. Both Lotus cars had wing failures. Graham Hill and his teammate Jackie Oliver suffered absolutely enormous accidents. Luckily, both drivers survived, but the dangers of mounting wings directly to the uprights was fully realized by the organizers of the sport, and ultimately, that technique was banned. Wings would have to be bolted directly to the bodywork of the cars from then on, and that changed the overall shape of the Grand Prix car and evolved into the shape we see today. In 1997, the Tyrrell team found a little loophole in the regulations that allowed them to mount little wings up on stilts once again. Dubbed the X-Wings, many teams copied this approach. But by the start of the 1998 season, the FIA had decided they really didn't like this design solution. And early in the season, they decided to ban them. On the grounds of safety officially, but in reality, it was probably just because they were a bit ugly. But as the genie came out of the bottle for the Wright brothers and their technology, 
the genie was once again out of the bottle in Formula One, as aerodynamic development technology, led by the aerospace industry, had really taken over the sport. Wind tunnels and computational fluid dynamics led to some incredibly complex designs of Formula One cars. The front wings of the 2008 season were something quite unlike anything ever seen before, and those levels of complexity had gone slightly too far. The FIA decided that it was too far and outlawed that level of complexity. But the complexity did continue to build up and up and up, and the cars then once again were dominated by those wing designs. Of course, now all of that complexity has been removed with the new 2022 cars, and it's a good thing. The cars should be able to race more closely to one another and provide better action on track.